Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to use Stellarium to show you some things about the motion of the night sky over a 24 hour period. So this is Stellarium and this is a planetarium software that simulates the night sky. It's totally free and so you can use it as well if you want to. You just go to this web address and when it opens this panel on the side is there and by getting rid of that I can get a wider view of the sky. So this thing is simulating the sky from my location. This gray button in the corner opens up a location box, and so you can see that my current location is on Cape Cod. That's fine, I'll use that location for now, although we'll change it in a little while. This button over here on the right-hand side opens up a time window, and you can see that Stellarium has chosen a time of 8.52. Of course, the current time, is 11.06 a.m. and I can change the current time by just clicking on this button. So this shows me what is going on with my sky in my location right now. And by the way, you can click and drag the screen to change your view a little bit and you can also use the trackpad to zoom in and zoom out. I want to be able to see the sun but I don't want to zoom in quite so much so I'm going to do something like that. By the way, the landscape is always the same on any location on Earth. This looks to me like a, a landscape that was taken somewhere in the Midwest. Uh, certainly not a typical landscape for Cape Cod. So what I want to do next is I want to show you how uh, you can have some fun with Stellarium. So if you click on the arrow right above the minute part of the time, you can see that things start to move a little bit more quickly. And in fact you can hold down this arrow button and uh, time will begin to fast forward by minutes and you can see some things that you might expect. The sun is moving from east to west across the sky and interestingly so are Venus and the moon which also happen to be up at the moment. And in a moment the sun is going to uh, get close to and then go below the horizon and so we'll get to see it get dark and uh, then the motion will start to really look pretty cool. So there are lots of things to notice here and it's fun to just kind of sit back and watch this for a while and as you do that at some point you'll probably notice that the motion that you see is all centered on one point. Now, we can put some constellations on this sky. These are the stick figure versions of the constellations, and there are lots of ways to draw these stick figures, and this is one such way. You can also put the constellation art on there, and that's fun to look at, but I don't think it will help uh, this explanation, so I'm going to take that back off. But if I run time forward again, you can perhaps see even more clearly the way the motion of the sky is evolving over the course of a night. So you may recognize some constellations in here, um, or at least some shapes. This is the Big Dipper, which is part of Ursa Major. And by the way, it's starting to get light here. It's 5.09 a.m. in the Stellarium universe. And um, so the sky is going to start to brighten, but I really want you to be able to see the stars. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off Earth's atmosphere. It turns out that the reason we can't see stars during the day is that the atmosphere is illuminated by the sun, and that's what causes the sky to be blue, um, and it makes it difficult for us to see the stars during the day. So I'm just going to turn the atmosphere off. Uh, more about why the sky is blue later this term. So anyway, here's the Big Dipper. Here, Here's, this is the ladle of the Big Dipper, and this is the handle. And these two stars at the end of the Big Dipper are called the pointer stars, because if you draw an arrow from these two stars, it will eventually land uh, somewhere near this star here, which we call Polaris, and you may have heard of it as the North Star. So that's Polaris there. Another common constellation that you can see really easily if you um, go out at night and look for it is this one here. This is called Cassiopeia. It's kind of got the shape of a W and um, it's got a lot of bright stars in it. It's easy to see. By the way, many people think that Polaris is important because it's the brightest star in the night sky. But in fact, it isn't the brightest star in the night sky. 
the brighter stars on this map are represented by larger dots. So that one's a pretty bright one, for example. This is a fairly bright star, so is this one and this one. And you can see that Polaris is represented by a relatively small dot. So not a particularly bright star, but an important star nonetheless because of the fact that it's at the center of the action. So to better understand some of the things that are going on here, sometimes it helps to think of the sky as a great starry sphere that's surrounding the Earth. And this provides a useful model for understanding what we're seeing over the course of 24 hours. So although the Earth is actually rotating this way, we don't perceive this rotation. And when we look at the sky, we have the impression that the sky is going this way. So the geographical North Pole of the Earth is here, and Polaris, or the North Star, is more or less above it. So when you look at the sky from the Earth, the effect is to make the stars look like they are all rotating counterclockwise around the North Star. So this is a really handy model, and we use it quite a bit to try to understand some things, but there are a few points that I should make before moving on to try to avoid future misconceptions. So first of all, this is not to scale. The stars are much further away and the Earth is way too big in this model. The other thing is that the stars are shown as being all on the sphere, all at the same distance away from the Earth. Now you could probably think about this a little bit and convince yourself that that's probably not the way that things are really working. But I want to show you a nice little simulation to really uh, dramatize this point. So this is a nice simulation showing the Earth's position and a group of stars that happen to be the stars in the Big Dipper. And you can see these rays uh, go out to this surface here, and th this is the way that the Big Dipper is projected on the sky. And so this is what we see from Earth when we look at these stars. And if you drag it around, you just, you, with your mouse pad, you can just drag this thing around, you can see that when you're looking in this direction at these stars in the Big Dipper, they form this nice pattern on the sky, and they basically just look like they're all at the same distance. It's hard to see that they're at different distances. But when you look from a different perspective, you can see, oh, this one's further away, and these ones are grouped a little bit more closely, but they're definitely not all at the same distance. And, uh, you know, this is the way it is. The stars are not all at the same distance. Nevertheless, it's kind of a convenient thing to show them that way when we use a model of the celestial sphere. So let's go back to Stellarium and do a little test. Now that you know that this motion we see in the sky results from the rotation of the Earth, let's look at what happens over the course of 24 hours. So you know that 24 hours is the length of a day, and a day represents one complete rotation of the Earth. So if you watch the stars over the course of 24 hours, what would you expect to see? So to answer this question, let's pick a star in Cassiopeia and let's just watch it over the course of 24 hours. So I'm going to put the middle star in Cassiopeia over here at about 9 o'clock compared to the North Star, Polaris. And now instead of advancing forward by minutes, I'm going to advance forward by hours and I'm going to do that 24 times. And what I want you to do is just watch this star and see where it ends up after 24 hours. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So you can see that after 24 hours, we're back to the same place, and this should feel like pretty good evidence that uh, this apparent rotation of the night sky is really just our perception, and that in fact what's causing this is the rotation of the Earth. The last thing I want to do in this video is to talk a little bit about the location of the North Star or Polaris. Now, you might imagine that if this star is directly over the North Pole, then it should also be directly overhead in the night sky. That would be a natural thing to imagine. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and kind of center this uh, picture of the night sky so that I have north on the bottom, south on the top, 
east over here and west over here. I don't quite have it rotated properly. It's tough to get it just right. That's pretty good. It's, <laughs> I'm not totally happy with it, but it's pretty good. Okay, in any event, uh, take a look at where Polaris is right there. Does that look like it's directly overhead? I don't think so. If you draw a line from north to south and a line from east to west, those lines would intersect right about here. So that is the point of the sky that's directly overhead and Polaris isn't directly overhead. In fact, when you click on Polaris, this box comes up over on the side of the computer and it says that the altitude of Polaris is about 41 degrees and change. It's actually, if you round, closer to 42 degrees. And it turns out that that angle, 42 degrees, is exactly equal to the latitude of the location where I am on Cape Cod. It's 42 degrees. So let's go to another location on the Earth and see if Polaris is still in the same place. So now I'm going to open my location box and I'm going to toggle off use auto location and I'm going to go to a new place. Quito is the city that is closest to the equator and so I'm going to look up Quito and I'm going to go there. So I'm going to click on use this location and uh, now I'm near the equator and uh, you can see, let's see here, the Big Dipper is over here. So these are the pointer stars. That's interesting. Let me fast forward in time and show you the night sky. So it's a very different look here. And uh, now that the Big Dipper is really coming into view, you can see where those pointer stars are pointing. They're pointing to a place very close to the horizon. Now remember, if Quito is close to the equator, then its latitude should be close to zero. And it turns out that the altitude of Polaris at the equator is also close to zero. It's basically right there at the horizon. I'm going to put on some grid lines here to help you see this even more clearly. This is just the celestial grid. It's kind of like latitude and longitude for the sky. And now you can see it really well. These circles are still happening, but they're centered on this point down here near the horizon. All right, so let's go to one more location. I looked up the northernmost city in the world, and it's called Long Yeerben, And it's in Norway. And so we're going to go there. It's actually only at 78 degrees. It's not really, uh, it's, it's north, but not as, not that far north. Uh, but anyway, um, here we are in Long Yerben, And now you can see that at 78 degrees latitude, we see that the North Star is much higher. And in fact, if I click on it, you will see, surprise, surprise, look at that the altitude of the North Star is also at 78 degrees. So it turns out that wherever you are on the Earth, the altitude of the North Star above the horizon will be exactly equal to your latitude. And uh, that's a cool thing. We need to explain why that is, but it's also a handy thing if you're, if you're stranded on a desert island or something and you don't know where you are, you can find your latitude by locating the North Star measuring the angle from the horizon looking north up to the North Star and you'll know your latitude right away. Finding your longitude is a little bit more difficult but anyway you could find your latitude. So I want to show you one more simulation to explain why the location of the North Star changes as you go to different latitudes on the Earth. So this is another simulation of the celestial sphere but this time the stars are not showing on the surface. And in this simulation, the white dot represents the location of an observer on Earth. Now, where would you look from this location to see the part of the sky that is directly overhead? Well, if you're standing on the Earth right here, overhead is going to be up here. And where's the North Star? Well, we know that the North Star is directly above the North Pole of the Earth. And so you can see that, indeed, the North Star will not be directly overhead for this person. 
it will be over here somewhere. The other thing is this person is going to be standing on the earth, which you know is an enormous ball, and yet they will not perceive the earth to be an enormous ball. Whenever you're standing on the earth, you have this sense that at least locally it's relatively flat. And so where would the horizon of this person be? This line here represents the horizon. And what I'm going to, in a moment, switch to the view of uh, the person and their horizon. And so you'll see that. So here's the horizon coming up. And now the whole thing is going to rotate to show, okay, this is overhead for this person. And this is the direction of the North Star. Let me move back. And now what we can do is we can switch the latitude to look at other locations on Earth. So we looked at the equator a little bit ago, and that is right at around zero degrees latitude. So now you can see, okay, this person is on the equator. And from their perspective, directly overhead is going to be here. And look at where the North Star is. It's over here. Now, I would say that's on the horizon. And here's where the model of the celestial sphere being so out of scale is a little bit of a problem. If this were in scale, the Earth would be really tiny and the celestial sphere would be really big. And so the North Star would look like it is right on the horizon. You can, because of the bad scale, you might think, oh, well, the horizon is really right here. And yeah, at this scale it is. But if you scaled these things properly, then the North Star would be right there. So let's look at the horizon view again. Here comes the horizon. There's directly overhead. There it is. And you can see, oh, the North Star is now directly on the horizon, which is what we saw when we went to the equator. Let's go to one more location. Oh, maybe two more locations. So the other place we looked at within Stellarium is we looked at what it would be like to be on the North Pole. Well, not quite. I guess we went to, we didn't go to the North Pole, did we? We went to 78 degrees. So here's someone at 78 degrees north latitude close to the North Pole. Here's directly overhead for that person. There's the North Star. And so you can see it's going to be relatively close to overhead. This is the horizon. Let me switch the view and show you. And there it is. And if we move all the way to the North Pole, you can see the North Star would be directly overhead. Let's take one more example and just see what would happen if you go to the Southern Hemisphere. So let me just move this around. Now you can see that this would be the equator of the Earth. So this observer is now in the Southern Hemisphere. Okay. Uh, where is their horizon? This is the line that shows their horizon. This is directly overhead. And actually, remember, this is the North Pole of the Earth, so this is the North Star. So the someone that is observing from the Southern Hemisphere will not even be able to see the North Star. So here comes the horizon. And there they are. So the North Star is down here below the horizon. This point here is now the point that the sky will appear to rotate around. Um, there is no star right at the um, south celestial pole. So there's no star like right there like there is um, here. So there's no sort of southern equivalent to Polaris. However, the southern sky has many other wonderful features. So although there isn't a pole star right at the southern pole, there are a lot of other really cool things to see, including the Milky Way, which is quite uh, amazing at many locations in the Southern Hemisphere. So if you ever get a chance to go, I highly recommend it. Okay, so I just want to go back one more time, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the Cape, and I just want to remind you of what we've seen today. So what we did first was we just fast forwarded through time and we noticed that the stars appear to move counterclockwise around a certain point here. This is the North Star, also known as Polaris, and that star happens to be right above the North Pole, the geographic North Pole of the Earth. And so what we're seeing when we see the sky appear to move over the course of the night is really just uh, we're perceiving Earth's rotation. 
The other thing we saw is that as you go to different locations on the Earth, the location of the North Star changes. And in fact, there are some places on Earth where you can't see the North Star at all. I guess I'll end by showing you one more thing. If you scroll over here to the east and kind of zoom in, you can fast forward through time. Let me zoom in a little bit more. I'll make the horizon appear to be flat so you can really see this. And uh, here we go. I'm going to move forward in time. And you can see that as, as different uh, things rise, they don't really rise straight up, as you might imagine. In fact, they rise up and to the right, if you're looking to the east. And pretty soon the sun is going to rise and you'll be able to see that even the sun is rising up and to the east. And actually, we saw something very interesting there. The sun didn't rise directly in the east, did it? It was sort of close to compass east, but this is actually due east, and the sun rose over here a little bit. These are some interesting things that we're going to want to follow up on, and uh, we'll do that. But I think that I've talked about enough for this video, and so I'm going to stop it here and we'll address some of these other interesting things in future videos. And until then, I hope if you enjoyed looking at Stellarium, you might try out uh, Stellarium for yourself. Go find it on the web and play around with it.